and welcome to another tutorial and today I'm going to make a Cricut Halloween paper cut. So go into design space and look for a trick or treat image. So the letters are joined up if you notice, that just makes it so much easier to cut out. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to transfer this into black for no other reason than it's easier for me. I just like to visualise the image as one colour. So next I'm going to look for a witch's hat. Let's scroll through and I want one with a bit of detail. So here we go, this is the image I want. And I'm just going to enlarge it, ungroup and then take away the bits that I need, get rid of what I don't need. I'm going to save this buckle, just delete these bits here and then I'm going to place that over the hat and just for a bit more detail I'm going to slice it so hi right click highlight and click slice and what that will do is cut the buckle out of the hat so that makes it a little bit more detailed now I'm going to just place my hat over my image and I'm happy that it fits I just want to remove one element of the cut Move the hat out of the way. And that little detail at the top, that little flick, I'm going to actually use that somewhere else on the cut. So I'm just going to get a square, place it over. I think I have to move my hat out of the way first. Right click and press slice. And that will remove that image from the cut altogether for now. There we go, get rid of the square, place my hat back over, make sure I'm just happy with its positioning. Faffing a bit here I know, but um, you just want it to be right, don't you? And then at least when you highlight it, right click it and weld, you know that you're happy with your image and it's going to be right. Of course you can always go back, but there you go, that's welded together. That's my first part of the image. So next, I'm going to just add a little detail. If you look at the C, the K and the R on my lettering, they're not completely joined up, which just worries me a bit when cutting out, it can make it a faff. So I'm just going to use these little flurries or details, add them in, position them to I'm happy, and then I'm going to highlight So I'm going to right click, weld, then that's connected. And then next add this last flourish and just where the eye is, it just looks like it's hanging a bit. So I'm going to also go flip it over so it's going in a different direction because I don't like everything looking too uniform. Place it, right click and weld. And that's all welded together now, which just looks so much better. And I just feel a bit more secure when printing, which for me is a really big deal that you'd, you don't want to print it all out and then, or cut it all out, sorry, and then it's not right. So next, I'm going to now look for my witch's legs. And what I'm looking for, here they are. So we've got spots, zigzags and stripes. So I'm going to go for the stripes. The zigzags would be good too but the spots not so much because they wouldn't connect. And then I'm going to also add this broomstick. So just add those to the design space. And then I'm going to split the legs because I only want the top layer. So these legs are fab. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to ungroup them and get rid of everything else apart from the top black layer because that is the layer that I want to work with. So I'll just quickly delete the rest. And these are great because if you use this paper cut as a cake topper, you could actually bend the legs so that rather than standing the whole paper cut up, you could actually bend them so that they were sat on top of the cake or you could have them so they were stood. I'm just going to resize them, get them to where I want them and then right click and weld. And yeah, you could group it all together, but I just find welding as I go along really works. And if there's anything I'm really unhappy with, I can always go back, undo, and redo it. 
there we go all welded together next we're going to get a spider's web so this is a spider's web here that i really want if you've read my blog post you'll know that i made some mistakes and if you look at the image um, on this is the left hand side we're working on but on the right hand side i did make a few errors this spider's web as long as you keep it nice and big cuts out really lovely when i cut my image out i cut it as a full 12 by 12 filled as much paper as i wanted could have wanted to now i'm going to get a flourish so this flourish here i'm just adding to the t and it's just a really good branch if you will to hang the spider's web off and then it's hanging and as i say this cuts perfectly so now i'm just positioning everything get the branch just in the right place and then i can start to hang my spider's web from it as I say, this cuts out beautifully. If you cut it as a large image, it cuts out so well. And there you go. I can now start to collect that all together. And that's welded. And now I can start working on the right-hand side. Now, this is where I made my mistakes on my previous paper cut. So I think it's just about not expecting too much from your Cricut because as incredible as it is, it can't cut the finest detail that... You couldn't cut yourself so it's just about being a bit realistic that you know if if, if it's a millimeter spider's web it's going to struggle so I just search for my cat and i just put i think i put in cat, black cat in the end i just wanted to reverse it stand it on the witch's shoe just so that the cat is there in the detail because you can't have a witch can you without a cat and there you go just get it positioned right stand it on the shoe and weld And now the broomstick. So my last broomstick was a bit of a disaster because I chose a really intricate broom. This one, I'm going to try and make a bit chunky. So I'm going to remove the bow. I don't think our witch really wants a bow on a broomstick. And then ungroup, get rid of all the little bits. But what I do want is the yellow broom top. There it is. Now the broom top, I'm going to reduce it, which we'll see in a minute, so that it fits over the top of my image, but is smaller in the middle so that I can cut it out. And I love slicing. I just love being able to create images out of images in design space. So there you go. I'm just making my broom head smaller, but it's got to be small enough that there's something to cut out on the outside. So I'm just go back. There you go. Shape it. Make sure that it's just perfect. And then slice. And what I've done there is I've just sliced the inside of the broom out so that it's just got a little bit of detail when I cut it out. Now, I don't know quite how that will cut out, but it's all experimental. However, as long as I've got a strong image around the edges, then at least I know that I'll be left with that if nothing else. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my spider's web. Now, if you read my post again, you'd have seen that I just my, my spider's web was so tiny. So this time I'm not going to use the web. I'm going to use a spider. I just asked too much of the Cricut machine. It really was a tiny, tiny little cut. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my spider off of here because that's a nice chunky image to cut out, a nice bit of detail just by using an oblong, highlighting and slicing, get rid of all of that so that I've just got a spider. And then I can just place him in there, resize so that it's just the right size and then add my broom. And that then gives me my final paper cut. I've just got to make sure that my broom is attached, highlight, weld the lot, and then save. And that is my finished paper cut. So I hope it works for you. I hope you've enjoyed that. And any problems, just let me know. But as I say, paper cutting is all about trial and error, about finding out what works for you. So yeah, happy crafting. <laughs>